No, no! No! Oh, you listening? Sean from Middle Grounded. I wanted to make a video today, and if you made it through yesterday's video, thank you so much. I was really scatterbrained this week. My head was hurting. I had a lot of notes. I hope I made it through in some kind of organized fashion. We're going to be talking about the first part of a rage-inducing call called How Hard Did She Fight? Oh boy. I didn't listen to the second half because I knew it was going to make me really angry. So I stuck with the first half. The first half says enough and guarantees domestic violence in the Armstrong household. In this call, of course, Lauren's been out drinking with Tony and Wendy. Drove home drunk because he doesn't give a damn about anybody else but himself and it's an inconvenience if he has to do anything else. He gets home and all of the scenarios, everything that was playing in his head on the way from Tony and Wendy's, because while he was over there, he was able to maintain that facade I talked about. Spousal paranoia where he can pretend everything's okay and they love him and he wants to present the fact that he has a loving girlfriend who cares about nothing else but him. Then when he gets in the truck, all of this stress of maintaining that facade builds up. Those imaginary scenarios play. He starts figuring out how he can catch her in those imaginary scenarios. Because even if they're not happening, he will assume that he just doesn't know how to catch her in those scenarios. So he's got to figure out a way to do it. And the easiest way to do it is to stay on the phone with her forever. Because it's Lauren. And the reason I say forever, she's at a party, a mixed party, living her life, being young and free, beautiful, just wanting to meet new people and experience new things. And because he's older, lives in the trailer of failure, has no life, no future, no prospects, he doesn't want that. And he assumes, I'm going to give you a, a B, and C. A, that she's going to hang around people and just talk, meet new people, have a good time. Or B, that every guy there is going to be seeing her naked and she's going to be having sex with him. If you asked him, because it's obviously B, if you asked him why he thought that, we know what the answers would be. Well, you know, I do trust you. It's just in my past. Well, then you don't trust her. But this is particularly infuriating because he has no reason to think she's cheating. Also, this young, by all accounts, pretty girl trying to live her life, have a good time, isolates herself at a party, at a place where you're not supposed to have anybody else there. Great fucking jaw. Thanks for cheating on me. But she isolates herself, eating a pretzel. She asks for a bud, a beer. And of course, Lauren thinks that's code word for cocaine because she's obviously going to be doing coke, showing everybody her bits, and she's going to have sex with other guys. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the next day there are voicemails. I am so sorry that I acted that way last night. I don't really remember what it was. I was drunk. Please forgive me. But it's kind of hard to forgive somebody when they act like this all of the time, unless you are a catfish woman. And part of me wishes when he said, how hard did you fight, that they would have hung up on him and there would have been a couple days of not speaking to anybody and then Dan would have called angrily and kept talking until he put him in his place but yeah so she asks for a taquito and all he hears is the cheater she asks for a taquito again and all he hears is the cheater he keeps bringing up Dan she didn't bring up Dan she had no interest in bringing up Dan but Lauren doesn't care he wants to hear about Dan because he's part cuck. He starts talking about everything in the past because spousal paranoia is everything in the past. What could have happened, where it happened, how long it could have happened for, and how many times it happened, even if it never happened. So I'll back up one more time. Mr. Penis begins to bring up the fact that Winnie at one point, I guess, had Dan's penis in her mouth. That's grounds for breaking up and never speaking to a woman again, but this is Lauren Armstrong we are talking about. He stayed, and he threatens her that if she does the hundred things that would have caused any normal man to run for the hills ever again, forget ever meeting him. She will lose him. 
the guy is so delusional and so desperate and so pathetic and such an asshole. I want you to imagine this scenario, if you would. This is based on a true story. Lauren's wife is at a book club. Say it's Winnie. Say Lauren is, doesn't have a sex offense. He's just the asshole he is. She's supposed to be home at 10. He's got the kids. He could probably deal with them for 30 minutes before he starts blowing up her phone. When are you coming back? Come on back. I need you back. When are you coming back? She's there discussing Twilight, and he's blowing up her phone. He's drinking, sends the kids to bed, maybe without food because Lauren probably forgot to feed them. Now, a normal guy would take care of those kids, enjoy his time with them, make sure they had something to eat, play with them, let them go to bed. Hell, maybe even on the couch, in a sleeping bag, with candy. Who knows? But he wouldn't do that. They would be an inconvenience, and he would be angry. He would be drinking because he can't control his drinking. Well, I'm at home. I'm not going to drive. Might as well drink. She'd be home at 10.15, was supposed to be home at 10. A lot of screaming and yelling would occur. Probably it would get physical. Because of the way Winnie is, she would fire back. But at this point, who knows, maybe it's a year and she's finally just broken. And Lauren would unleash and the kids would see it. And just like the spousal paranoia when he's accusing her of cheating because of the extra 15 minutes and how many people were at the book club and were there any guys at the book club, those kids are going to see that and just assume, oh, well, this is what marriage is and he's going to pass it on. There would definitely be domestic violence. Lauren also has a problem with his moods. No matter how you answer the phone, no matter how friendly you are, happy to talk to him, you know that you can tell how the phone call is going to be by his tone. Think of the Ramona calls when she'd be like, Oh, hey, Lauren, how you doing? And you knew he's just waiting to erupt. He's waiting to talk about doctor, doctor. Just waiting to pick that fight because there's nothing else going on in his life. Again, no future, nothing to look forward to. All he's got are these catfish women. So that's what he OCDs on come home happy he comes home like I said in the monster video things aren't the way he wants he's going to go crazy Lauren is an asshole everyone is cheating on him it's always infidelity they're doing him wrong they got to prove themselves to him he treats Roy in the same way everyone else treats him he lectures Roy on the very things that he does all the time That, that's Lauren now Lauren would be out trying to cheat time and time again. He would. And then he would spaz out when Winnie would talk to another guy. There was a guy I looked up to a lot. Finally went out to Vegas with him. And I found out that this guy who threatened his wife, he was going to or leave her, force her to leave, and he was going to keep the kids because an Orlando Bloom Legolas pop-up came up from where she bought the tickets. We're at a strip club. He's completely drunk. This is a guy who was professional, I looked up to, completely drunk, trying to touch the women, throwing up all over the place, wanting to go out and buy, you know, hookers, and that's Lorne. He's disgusting. I hate him. And in the second half of this call, you're going to hear how much I hate him. All he thinks is they're cheating. All he wants them to do is cheat. All he cares about is having something to hold over their head. And until he gets off the phone and tries to find a real woman, a real woman at like a church, or somebody that's going to hold him accountable, or somebody that is going to make him be around other people more often than not, it will be catfish forever. He'll be talking to the president of Zimbaganda, or whatever made-up country they're calling from, because he is an 87. He will always be an 87. Thank you for listening. Sean from Middle Grounded. I'll talk to you in the next one. <laughs>